Chopper Fisher here and today I'm going to show you how to take an old disgusting carburetor like this one and make it look like this. So first off, you always want to start off on the outside of the carburetor so that way by the time you're on the inside doing the rebuild, uh, you don't have to worry about all this disgusting debris and stuff falling into your brand new jet and your nice clean bowl. So always start with the outside. So first, you're going to want a basket of wire brushes, a bottle of degreaser, you're going to need a Dremel, you're going to need wire brushes. I recommend using this guard for your Dremel for the wire brushes because those things are insane. You're going to want a little bit of buffing compound. I highly recommend the Dremel brand buffing wheels over the knockoff brands. These things just frill into nothing in the matter of moments where one of these will last pretty much the whole entire carburetor. Uh, this specific Husky 6-in-1 uh, screwdriver, every single bit fits every single thing on these carburetors. You're going to want two carburetor rebuild kits, which I have here. One of them is empty because I already rebuilt the carburetor. You're also going to want your, your typical uh, global pandemic COVID-19 protection safety glasses for the wire brushes. Those things are insane. Do not use this for the carb cleaning process and all the chemical spraying because this is meant for particle protection, not chemical protection. If anything, it'll hold it right in your face. If you have chipped up black painted carburetors, uh, you're gonna want a can of paint stripper. Obviously, a little bit of that there gum out. If you don't have polishing compound, you very well might have just some Brasso or something laying around the house. Pretty much anything will get the job done. And I also keep one triple O or quadruple O grade steel wool um, for rubbing off all of the excess compound that you're going to have after buffing. I also always keep an airline on the side here. I have a roll of paper towels. You're going to want a lot of them. A couple magnetic trays always help with the process of staying neat and organized. One larger tray to hold all of the old jets and gaskets and stuff that you're basically replacing this stuff with. Old tray for the wire brushing process, great idea. Hold it down a little bit, now you get to scrubbing. Turns out this one did have some old black paint on it still, so letting that paint stripper all fizzy up in there for a couple minutes. time you want to break out your Dremel with the steel wire brush on the end. We're going to finish getting all the cracks and crevices with this and get all the dirt and grime and leftover little chips of paint. If you don't want to have to do the other one twice, you probably shouldn't be uh, cleaning this one with this one right next to it. We're gonna have to rebuff that one now. Special tea delivery. Thank you, my love. Pro tip, you get a special tea delivery, make sure you cover it when you're cleaning your carburetor. Oh, that's good. So anyways, most of you might be perfectly okay with the way that this carburetor now looks just after the wire wheel process. It's a borderline shiny and glistening and very clean looking. However, this video is for the go-getters. But, so this is where the carburetor's at just after the wire wheel. Looks pretty good. But, we're gonna make it look a whole lot better before we get into the inside and rebuild it. exactly half of it so that way I could flip it around and show you the other side. So this is just the wire wheel side. Um, it, it still looks pretty good, a hell of a lot cleaner and better than just a stock, you know, stock dirty old carburetor. And this is the polished side. 
And for Dremel, that's pretty damn good. Um, if you have a, a bench buffing wheel, obviously that'll do 10 times better. And the more elbow grease you put into it, obviously the better the results you'll get. I only worked on this maybe a solid 10, 15 minutes of, of polishing. And then I hit it with the, the steel wool uh, to get rid of any excess compound. Well, that being done, let's crack open the inside and see what the damage is in there. The other one was pretty damn bad. Moment of truth. Ew! Hold on. Let's get some light on there. It was pretty raunchy. <laughs> There's like straight up mud in there. So now I'm just gonna open up the main diaphragm area. Uh, get that all separated. Don't really wanna hose that down. It's carb clean. Be very careful to not damage your diaphragm. Cause that is gonna be reused. Now we can begin to move all of the jets. Switching to the flathead for the main jet. Wow, that was like, that wasn't even screwed in all the way. So there's also this little rubber plug. Um, I don't know its uh, exact purpose, but I know that it, there is a chamber coming from the main jet to the idle jet, so uh, don't lose that plug. Now to remove the float, there is two sides to this little shaft. One is smaller in diameter, which is the same size as the hole. The other side is flanged. So I actually had to use a center punch and put it right on the center of that and tap it a few times with a hammer because that thing was just not budging the way that it normally can by just applying a lot of pressure with a, with the tip of a screwdriver. So now that it's out enough, I'm gonna push on it. Get it to stick out as far as you can on this side. Just grab a pair of pliers, grab it and wiggle this thing out. Being sure to take care, because this is one of the pieces you're definitely going to reuse. This is not in the rebuild kit. This old float valve does seem like it's actually in pretty good shape, but I got a brand new one, so I don't need to use it. I'm just gonna keep this inside of this nasty bowl, set that aside, continue dismantling this. So one of the pieces that do come with the kit is this right here. It is held on there by this screw we should come right out. This is just pressed in place and it has a little O-ring on it. So it might be stuck there pretty good. You could just grab that some pliers and wiggle and pull. It was a lot easier than the last one was. The new kit does not come with this screen. The new kit does not come with this little screen that you see here on the bottom. So be sure to save that. Use the old needle and just pry this out of place that off like that and that's also going to need to be cleaned so set that right inside of that bowl flip the screwdriver inside out go to the side with the small flat head and that fits perfectly inside of here for the idle jet voila it's got so much gunk and build up you wouldn't even know that this is a a washer, but you're gonna wanna try to pop this out so that way you can remove the rest of it. And just like that. So now this piece needs to be pressed outwards, going up towards the diaphragm. So you're going to want to find something that fits the diameter of uh, the center brass piece. Can't really tell that it's brass. But you clean it and make sure you got something that's either smaller than the outer side or about the same so you don't damage the outside of the, the car body. This hammer is way overkill, only by three pounds. I'm going to line it up, give it a couple light taps. And you can see it's working its way down already. Boom. 
you can see here, it's now sticking up from the top of the diaphragm area. Just like that, you get this old nasty shaft out. And this is one that you definitely want to replace and you don't want to beat around the bush with this one because all these tiny little holes here are very likely to be plugged, especially if it looks as bad as this one does on the inside. So take this, throw it in the scrap pile. Now that sums it up for what you get for uh, jets inside the kit. However, there is other jets that you're gonna wanna take out, like this, like this air jet. Pull this jet out. Now this is a good jet. You're gonna wanna keep it and clean it. There's another one on the very tippity top on the innermost part of the carburetor. This is the part that mounts to the motor. Right here on the top, there is another one. And this is another piece that we must keep. So now this is where we need to uh, break that bowl back out, get this thing inside, and start hitting this thing with some carb clean. Make sure we get rid of uh, every tiny little speck of dirt and gunk. And clean out all of these chambers where we pulled out all of those air jets, uh, idle screws, main jets, everything needs to be spotless. For this part, I'm gonna back up the camera a little bit because this jet spray blasts everywhere. With that being said, protect your eyeballs. <laughs> sparkly clean on the inside, all of the channels nice and open and spotless. We give everything a quick little wipe dry. So just before final assembly, I like to take the air hose and blast out any remaining uh, crap that could possibly be lingering. <laughs> So this uh, idle adjustment screw on the outside you can remove because the kit comes with a new one. So first things first with the new kit I get this main, I always put this main shaft back in first. So it's got a groove here that needs to line up with a notch there so that way it's, it sits exactly where it needs to be. And Enter it from the top, use a pair of needle nose pliers, hold it just by the rim gently because it's brass. And once that is in place, I just use this end of my screwdriver, pull the, pull the bit out, and press into place. So to start for the reassembly inside of the bowl area, um, we're going to start with the main jet, starting with the washer, and then the main jet. Large flat head, tight and snug. Never over tighten anything with brass threads. You can strip them extremely easy. And then to go to the idle jet. Small flat head, just kind of falls right in place. Snug. Now the idle jet plug. Don't forget this little plastic plug. And now to start with the needle valve assembly for the bowl. This little housing piece for the needle valve, I usually just get a, a tiny squirt of PB Blaster on my glove and then get it on this O-ring so that way it doesn't cause any sort of dry damage on its way in. And it pops in nice and easy if you do it that way. Oh yeah, and uh, this is crucial. Pull this guy back out. It was nice and easy, thanks to the lubrication. And don't forget this little screen. God, getting a little ahead of myself here. Pop that screen back in place, and now, 
seat this all the way. And now that you got the valve assembly back in place, and you got these pieces cleaned up, got to get this little bracket that holds the assembly in place and fasten down. And now before you put the bowl back in place, you got to put the needle valve in place on the bowl bracket. Set that needle down inside of the assembly and get this little shaft that holds the bowl in place and clip this in there. It usually sticks out a little bit right there and gives you a hard time. I just use a pair of pliers and press that back into place. And that is it for the inside of the bowl. So the gasket looks like it can go on pretty much any way, but the distance between this and that are uh, slightly different. So the larger distance, it, it'll basically only sit perfectly in one, one spot anyways, you'll figure it out. But the larger distance between the two goes where this is. Line the bowl up to this brass tube here. Get that in there. And now for this new and improved fancy looking idle screw. Put that spring on and thread this guy into place. Now for the fuel mixture screw, which is this here, you want to make sure that you put this on properly. You want the spring on first, then you want the washer, which is this tiny little guy, and then you want this tiny little o-ring. Probably can't even see these things in my fingers. And then you can insert it into the fuel mixture housing. So now, you always want to inspect your diaphragm. Um, I found a very, very, very tiny uh, pinhole in mine that I may or may not patch. Um, if I don't patch it, I'm just going to get a replacement. But we're going to get into replacing the needle. Uh, because I replaced it on the other one, uh, I have to replace this one because they, they don't exactly match. Um, the, the needle in this kit seems a little bit fatter and doesn't go quite as uh, narrow as quickly as the original needle. So now you're going to want the tiny flathead, I mean the tiny Phillips. There's two screws in here. Now don't panic when you see that tiny little spring. It's not as bad to get back into place as you would think it might be. Remove this washer. And now with a pair of pliers, you got this little C-clip. You need to pop right out of place. Just like that. Then you slide this little plastic piece down and off. Just applying a little bit of pressure. Now the original needle only has one spot for that little C-clip to go. So to start with, I always just match the length. See where this one lands. This is what I did with the other one, so I'm gonna do it with this one. And it looks like, it looks like it lines up with the center mark on this C-clip. Uh, so that's where I'm gonna mount it to match, for one, the other carburetor, and two, it gives you the mid-range to start with. So when you do, if you do need to ever adjust your needle, gives you a better idea on whether or not you need to go up or down. You don't have one or other, either of the two extremes being lean or rich. You get it right in the middle for a proper adjustment. It does come with a new C-clip, so I'm just gonna use that one. I'm gonna pop that into place first. Now this little plastic piece should be nice and easy. It just go right where it needs to. Stops there. And now the washer, back over the C-clip. Now you want the needle. I use a pair of needle nose pliers. There's a little plastic piece. There's a, a tiny little plastic bump out that drops inside of a slot. You can feel when that's aligned by just turning getting the needle to lock into place right there. And now over the top of this, we want to drop the spring. I just use the old needle, line it up over the top. That way it sits right inside of that little hole. 
And now for the fun part, getting this plate put back over the top of that spring. And then getting the screen, the screws in place without messing up the spring underneath. So you get that first first screw in, only put it on a couple threads, you don't want to over tighten it because then the bracket's going to be all wonky at an angle because of the spring. Just drop the other screw in there, a couple of wiggles, and we're on our way. Now note that the diaphragm has a little notch on it to line up with the notch on the uh, carburetor itself. You want that seated in there nice and perfect. that right there folks about sums it up to get you two clean functional carburetors the easy way. Hopefully uh, this was a, a help to any of you or some of you. Maybe it was just one little thing that you were looking for. Maybe it was the whole thing you were looking for. Either way I'm hoping there was something in this that helped you get through uh, rebuilding one of your carburetors. So if you got anything out of this video today please subscribe to the channel and uh, click the like button on this video even the little bell so that way you get a notification next time I post a video if you're into that sort of thing. I guess it's on to the next project from here. Thanks for tuning in.